you should see how I have my phone set up right now. It's kind of ridiculous. All right, so it is four in the afternoon. I just made a cup of coffee. My dog wants to play fetch. But you know what? Sounds like the perfect time to do my bookshelf tour. So I figured, why not do it now? I've got nothing better to do today. It's cloudy, cold, as all get out. And I just kind of want to stay inside and drink coffee and think about books. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so these are my bookshelves behind me. I'll kind of explain how I have them organized and then I'll go, I'm, I'll probably bring y'all closer uh, and then go through my bookshelves. So basically kind of how I have them divided is I go favorites are up top and then it just kind of goes from favorites to least favorites. And then this third one over here is, I guess it could be my TBR shelf because those are the books that I want to read the most. Um, so for example, like The Raven Cycle, Six of Crows, um, those kind of books, they will definitely be up here in the favorites shelf whenever they get moved over, but I have them over there because I want to read slash reread all of these. So, I will uh, take y'all down off of this very precarious stand I have you on to bring y'all closer. So, I just stepped on a dog toy. All right. So I'm holding my phone, so it's gonna be kind of shaky. I hope that's okay. But starting up here, up here, uh, I've got right here is an oof, illustrated uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. Oof. Because that one is my, that's my favorite book out of the series. Uh, and then I have the Harry Potter series that my grandma got me for Christmas few years ago, so thank you, grandmother. And then right after that, I have the Vampire Academy series. Um, and I also have the first in the Bloodlines, there it is, the first in the Bloodlines series. But I haven't finished that, but I have finished the original series and I really like it. And then I have right here, the statistical probability, oh, I should probably say, Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling, Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead, uh, The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight by Jennifer E. Smith. I really like that cover. And then, whew, arm's getting tired. Then we move down here, and I've got Reflection by Elizabeth Lim. This is one of those Twisted Tale Disney books. I've got Once and Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. This is a uh, modern, I think, Merlin, not Arthur, Knights of the Round Table retelling. Uh, there we go. I've got Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I've got Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alir Sands. I'm sorry, I do not know how to English very well. I've got, whoop, I've got The Wicker King by Kay Ancrum. I've got the Foxhole Court series by Nora Sakovic. If you can't tell by my past few videos, how I feel about this series. Yeah. Um, Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda and Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Abertali. I have read Simon, have not read Leah yet. Autobiography by Christina Lauren. Loveless by Alice Oseman. And also Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I really wanna read these two, haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, the Merciful Crow and the Faceless Faithless, bleh, 
Hawk by Margaret Owen. This to me seems like it's going to be very similar to Six of Crows. So, but I haven't really seen this be very popular. Uh, I've read the first few chapters of it, but just from the synopsis, that's kind of what it sounds like. So if you want something very similar to Six of Crows, maybe try this out. Seems like it'll be very similar. I'm excited because like, look at that cover. Yes, okay. The Infinite Noise. <laughs> Uh, I'm laughing because I have uh, An Infinite Noise and A Neon Darkness by Lauren Shippen. These books are companions to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, podcast. I was about to say podfic, but that's something different. Um, the podcast, A Bright Session, which I really like because it's really cool. Because if you haven't heard of it or watched it, it's basically... Like, the tagline for it is, what if the X-Men had to go to therapy? So, it's a, someone's a therapist, and she's a therapist to people with superpowers. Very interesting, very cool. I like An Infinite Noise because Adam and Caleb are my favorite characters from that podcast. Um, so, I was excited that they have a story. And then A Neon Darkness is by, is his name Damon? Is his name Damon, or am I just... It's like, thinking about Vampire Academy here. I mean, Vampire Diaries. Damien. Yeah, so I was right. Uh, Alright, so next is Good Omens by... Neil Gaiman and Sir Terry Pratchett. <laughs> I felt so bad. I love the show. I bought this book because I loved the show. Yes, I know it's blasphemous to watch the show before you read the book. Um, in my defense, I don't know how I didn't know this, but I, I didn't know that it was a book when I watched the show. So that's my defense. I've got I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. I think that's how you pronounce their name. And then I've got The Andromeda Stain and The Andromeda Evolution by Michael Creighton. Creighton? Again, I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce names. All right. I'm going to have to... There we go. I've got The Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I got that for my birthday for Christmas several years ago. So... Thank you. I've got the Natural series by Jennifer oh, Lynn Barnes, I think. Yep, Jennifer Lynn Barnes. If you have not heard of this, which again, this is another one that I haven't really seen be very popular. If you like Criminal Minds, read this. It's even, look, the tagline even says it's Criminal Minds for the YA world. Yeah, very good. I have the first four. There is like a fifth companion story, spinoff story about them because they're all teenagers when they're adults. But I really like that story. I also really like Criminal Minds. So anything like I read Criminal Minds and I was like, yes, oddly enough, side tangent, but oddly enough, I'd vaguely heard about the series and then I watched the Criminal Minds episode the, that like two part series, that two part parter in season three with uh, Spencer going back to his hometown and like re meeting up with his dad. And for some reason, that episode episodes reminded me of that. And so I got them because of that. I don't know, it was years ago. Don't ask me things. Uh, Legends by Marie Lou. Uh, A Danger to Herself and Others by Alicia. Shimnell? Shimnell? Again, sorry. Inkheart by Coralina Funk. I do like the movie. Haven't read the book. No, I have read the book. I haven't read the rest of the series, but I read this first one. Dustfinger's my favorite in both the movie and the book, so. Uh, Poet Anderson. Mm, this is a... I'm crossed over here. By Tom DeLong and Susan Young. 
This is a very unique story because it's about these two brothers. They get into a car wreck. The older brother is in a coma and the younger brother goes into like this dreamscape place to try to rescue him. But he doesn't remember what he does in there when he wakes up. Very interesting. Uh, matched by Allie Condal. I read these back in middle school and then it was high school when the third one came out so I reread them there. I do like this. I, I do like this series. I think it's really nice. Um, I like the romantic pairing in it. I also like how this last one reached. It does what I haven't really seen a lot of other dystopian books do which is it details the day-to-day -day life after a revolution has happened. Which I think is pretty cool. Uh, the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Uh, this autobi- or not autobiography, but memoir biography thing of Alexander Hamilton by Martha Brockenborough? I don't know. I saw it at Target and it seemed really interesting because I like the Hamilton soundtrack. That's how my brain works. Don't question it because I don't even know. Alright, and then I've got The Warning. I've got The Warning by James Patterson and The Institute by Stephen King. Then going down here. Uh, I've got The Cruel Prince Folk of the Air series by Holly Black. The, the reason these are right here is because they are on the they were on the TBR shelf and then I took them off because I was going home for a few days and I thought I would read them there. I didn't end up doing that. I just ended up binging Hamilton. I mean, not Hamilton. I just ended up binging Hannibal. Um, and then I can't really find a spot back on that TBR shelf to put them. So I just put them right here. But I do like, I've read the first one. I want to finish reading them. I do really like them. So next is The Hate You Give by, oh geez, Angie Thomas. I feel really bad. I haven't read this yet, but I am excited to because I know I'm going to like it. Uh, All the Bright Places by Jennifer Neven? Nevin. And then I've got the Confessions of a Murder Suspect series by James Patterson. And then I've got the Dan two books in the Daniel X series. By James Patterson that my dad gave me. Murder Games by James Patterson. Um, I've got A List of Cages by Robin Rowe. I actually really liked this book. I thought it was nice that the ending kind of came hard and fast uh, out of nowhere, but I really liked the, the story overall about these two kids who were childhood friends, but then they kind of got separated and then they rekindle in high school And then the one friend, it's, it's also interesting that this book, uh, one of the main characters has ADHD. Um, him and his girlfriend just, it's like they kind of form a family unit. Like him and his girlfriend are the mom and then the, the other kid who's like having some family problems. He's like their kind of adopted son. Anyway, good story. Uh, I've got... The Darker Shade of Magic series, which I bought because Paperback Dreams. Yeah. Haven't read it yet, but I'm interested to. A Beautiful Creatures series. I've only read the first book. I haven't read the other three. I don't like the movie. I absolutely love this first book, but I haven't read the rest. I'm kind of scared too, honestly. Oh, hey, I was actually thinking about this book earlier today, and I was wondering if I still had it. Um, so I'm glad to see that I do. A Dreadful Tale... The Dreadful Tale of Prosper... Oh, um... Crap. Uh, <laughs> the Darker Shade of Magic series is by V.E. Schwab. Yeah. The Beautiful Creatures. As you can see, this book is very well loved. Uh, Cammie Garcia and Margaret Stoll. If you want a speculative fiction southern gothic story i definitely recommend this yeah and then the dreadful tale of prosper redding by 
Alexandria Bracken. I really like this cover too, it's really pretty. Uh, I'll Give You the Sun by Jan D. Nelson. Haven't read that one. Made to Kill and Empire State by Adam Christopher. I bought these because my, one of my professors in college recommended Made to Kill. Um, I'm trying to remember what the class was. Cause it was, it was a fiction class, but it was before I declared as a creative writing major. Cause it was my first semester of college. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Hmm. I don't remember, but here he recommended this one because it's like a film noir kind of story, except the main detective is a robot. And then I saw this one, Empire State, which was, even on the back of the cover, it kind of compares itself to Batman's Gotham. And I love Batman. So. I've got... I'm thinking of ending things, again, because of Paperback Dreams. Um, saw that at Target because the movie just came out. Netflix sticker. I'm kind of scared to read this one because I'm not usually... I don't like horror because I'm a scaredy cat. But we will see. Okay. Last shelf. I'm literally sitting on the floor. Okay. Last shelf. We have... Oh yeah, we have some poetry books. I've got Whiskey, Words, and Shovel, Volumes 1, 2, and 3 by R.H. Sin. And then I've got The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Loveless. And then we've got... Ooh, sorry the lighting is so dark over here, but I don't really have any lighting. We've got Everland by Wendy Spin Spinell. If you want, like, a steampunk version of Peter Pan... Read this. Got the Duff by Cody Keplinger. Keplinger. I have read the book and seen the movie. I like them both, even though they're very different. The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. That name sounds familiar. Oh, did she also write the Dreadful Tale of Prosper Reading? That's cool. Didn't realize that. Darkest Minds, haven't read that one, but I know it's a movie, and I know the general kind of what goes on. I'm excited to read it. The Martian by Andy Weir. Wire? Weir? I don't know. Um, I have seen most of the movie, and I've read most of the book. I typically, this, okay. Let me readjust, because I want to say something. This typically wouldn't be something that I would pick up. Because it's, you know, like a survival, survivalist story. And I'm, that's just not usually something I'm into. But the fact that the main character is just sassy and sarcastic as all get out is right up my alley. So that makes this very enjoyable. Plus, I mean, look at the cover. It's gorgeous. So I have read most of the book. I do like it. Um, and I have seen most of the movie. And I do really like it. I think the movie is actually really good. And then I have Divergent and the four Divergent collection by Veronica Roth. I did have the original, I did have the whole trilogy, but I gave it away and then I rebought the first one because I actually do like the first one, but I don't like the second or the third one. So I now just own these two. And I do like this one because I do like the stories from Four's point of view. And then I have this series, A uh, Thousand Pieces of You. Again, look at that cover. It's beautiful. By Claudia Gray. Don't know much about that. It's about this series. Uh, I haven't read it yet. I have The Program and The Treatment by Susan Young. Oh, my dog has gotten a hold of this. You can tell. Um, I have read some of this, and I think it's very interesting that they... It's based on a society that is so hyper worried about teens becoming depressed and or suicidal that if you show any sign of that, you will get sent to 
like a, what do they call it? Like, you'll get sent to the program, which is supposed to help you, but this is obviously like a dystopian series. So there's more under the surface. I think it's an interesting concept. I haven't read, I've read the first few chapters of the book, but I haven't read all of it to really form an opinion yet. Honestly, the only thing I can remember is that the main character's friend wore purple colored lenses just to make herself look happier. Uh, I've got I'll Never Tell by Abigail Hass. I like this cover too. I like the girl's makeup. It's pretty. And then I have most of the... What, what is this series called? Throne of Glass series. I think I'm missing the last two books uh, by... Sarah J. Mass. Oh, how did I not know that? <laughs> Sarah J. Mass. Uh, I haven't read these yet. So, yeah. Don't have an opinion. And then I've got Asylum by Madeline Rowe? Rooks? Rao? I read some of that, but not, again, not enough to form an opinion. <laughs> okay. So that is that shelf. Now we will move over to this shelf. Okay, now starting at this top shelf, I am very proud that I finally have a Rick Riordan shelf because uh, this right here, the Tower of Nero came out a month ago, a few weeks ago, a month ago. And so I now have an entire shelf that is nothing but Rick Riordan. So yeah, I own everything except the King Chronicles. Uh, but I have the original Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the Heroes of Olympus, the Trials of Apollo, and Magnus Chase. I'm excited to now finally be able to marathon everything. I very much love this series. Okay. <sighs> moving a bit farther, or moving to the next shelf, I have... Loki, whoops, I have Loki by Mackenzie Lee. This is interesting because this takes, I guess it's Marvel, so I guess we can say this is the Marvel Loki, and it plops him, he's a teenager, and it plops him in Victorian England. I'm intrigued. I like Victorian England. I like Tom Hindelson's Loki. I'm here for it. Next we have... The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. I really like this book. I also really like the audiobook. Oh, I should also say that for the Foxhole Court series, love the audiobook for that. It's amazing. This is kind of what I would show to, or this is kind of what I would use as an example to anyone that doesn't understand what speculative fiction is. Um, the best way I can describe it is it's like our world, except there are one or two fantasy, fantastical elements to it. Great book, by the way, if you can't tell. Next, we have Geekerella by Ashley Poston. This book is heavy, it's like got weight to it. I really like this book. Um, I really like the cover. I really like this book for one specific reason, and that is a few years ago, I read this book called This Is What Happy Looks Like. It's by the same person who wrote The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight. And the synopsis to that book and this book on the surface are very similar. You have this famous superstar type person and then this normal small town-esque person. They end up by accident having like an elect, elect online relationship and then they finally meet face to face. The only difference is I was, whenever I read this is what happy looks like, I was really wanting some like miraculous ladybug, double identity shenanigans and that doesn't really happen. In this though, it does. And then it also has to deal with like conventions and fandoms and all that good stuff. So there's a lot of love for for that in this book. <laughs> okay, this next one, <laughs> I have The Kill Order by James Dashner. 
because I have the rest of the series right here. Um, but I have the kill order, which is the the prequel. Yeah, the prequel to the Maze Runner. The pre-prequel, because there's also the Fever Cold, which I think is the pre-sequel, because it takes place before the Maze Runner series, but after this. It's confusing. Okay. Next, I have the Sin... No, the Lunar Chronicle series, uh, which... R I know a lot of people say that they, they can't get into the series because the first book is the slowest, and I would agree to that. But I really, really like the series. So if you're interested at all in sci-fi retellings of fairy tales, I would say give it a shot. Um, I, do, I, I do understand and can definitely sympathize with people that say just because the first one is kind of slow and predictable that they can't really get into it. But I have really fond memories of reading this and then geeking out with uh, one of my college classmates daily about it. So I, I really, really like that series a whole lot. But I can understand that slow beginnings are very annoying. Next, I ha oh wait, I didn't say who this was by. It's by Melissa Meyer. Marissa Meyer, sorry. And then I have another by this person. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. I think the first name is Yukito. Yukito. I'm not gonna try to pronounce their last name. It's by this person though. It's really good. It is a translation because it was written, I want to say, in Japan, but don't quote me on that. But it's got like a manga and an anime. I've seen the first episode of the anime, but I haven't seen any of the rest, and I haven't read the manga. But the book is really good. The twist ending at the end, I did not see coming. Next, I have Nevermore by Kelly Craig, which is a book I absolutely love, and again, haven't seen... A lot of people really talk about this. It is a trilogy. I have only read the first book. It's just really good. It's really good. I like... I like that it's, you know, got that preppy cheerleader and the goth kid. They're paired up for a school project and then romance ensues. What I do like about this one is neither of them ever tries to change the other. They just kind of accept each other as they are, which is really nice. I like that a lot. It reminds me of Star Trek of how... I'll talk about that in a minute, but it reminds me of Star Trek. And, like, no one ever tries to force Spock to be more human. That was a weird side tangent, but okay. Next is Cruel Beauty by Rosamond Hodge. I really like this. Just like I also really like East by Edith Pateau. These are both retellings of Beauty and the Beast, but they're kind of different. So if you want a bit more of like a sarcastic, witty characters, um, a bit more, I don't know, a bit more like action, fast paced, romance, romance, but they both have romance, but when I say romance, I mean, like, this one's a bit more, yeah. If you want, yeah, they're both retellings of Beauty and the Beast, but if you want one that's a bit more, like, sarcastic, witty characters, enemies to lovers, that good stuff, I would recommend Cruel Beauty. If you want one that's a lot more softer, more poetic, more... Not really enemies to lovers, but more of like, let's help each other out kind of relationship. I would recommend East. But they're both really good. My arm is getting tired again. All right, next we have, oh yeah, The Eye of Minds by James Dashner. I read this in ninth grade. The ending absolutely blew my mind. I know there's uh, other books in the series. I would like to read them. I just haven't yet. But I definitely recommend this one if you want a good, like, SAO story. Because this is very similar to Sword Art Online in that people get trapped in a video game. But this one is actually really good. And I really like it. Alright, so I might have a problem, as you've noticed. 
because the next four books are ones that I also bought because of paperback dreams. So we've got Beach Read by Emily Henry. We've got Get Alive Chloe Brown and Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. And then we've got Tinder Tinder's the Flesh by Agustina Baz Terica. So yeah. I may have a problem. Alright, next we have this series right here. Um, the Gallagher Girl series. By Oh yeah, Ellie Carter. Um, <laughs> she took the squeaker out of one of her toys last night. I am sorry. Uh, I have the first and fifth book uh, in like an ebook format, but I really like this series. It's very good. And then we have the Cassandra Clare section. I don't have the Dark Artifices series, so I just have the Infernal Devices, the Mortal Instruments, and then the first book in the Last Hours. But, yeah, I like her stuff too. Classic example of urban fantasy. Next we have a beautiful friend A Beautiful Friendship by David Weber. I absolutely love the ser love this book. I know it's a series, but I've only read this first one and honestly it can stand as a standalone, but it's really good. It's sci-fi. This girl and her family move to a recently colonized planet. Uh, she goes out exploring one day and runs into this little like six-limbed tree cat character and they become buds really cool next oh wait yeah I said it was by David Weber next we have Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris uh, I don't think I need to say anything about that except I absolutely love the movie the movie is a classic okay that's just gonna there we go. Okay. Next I have The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. I haven't read, I haven't finished the book. I've read most of it and I haven't seen the movie, but I think it's very interesting because it takes a zombie apocalypse from the perspective of an eight-year-old zombie girl who doesn't even really know what's going on. I have next Alienated and its sequel Invaded by Marissa Landers. This is um, what I was talking about earlier with Star Trek. This reminds me of Star Trek in a lot of ways because it's about an alien that was raised in a society very similar to Vulcan and then a human, like, and it's an exchange program, so he comes to Earth. But the only difference, I do like this book, but the only difference between this and, like, Star Trek is he actually does become more human, quote-unquote, as the book goes on. Next, I have two copies of Daredevil. Uh, I have Born Again and The Man Without Fear by Frank Miller and Romita Jr. Because I really like Netflix's Daredevil, so I wanted to read some of the source material. And then I have this Super Sons Omnibus Collection because in my uh, poetry workshop class, this girl wrote a poem about, I think it was Super Sons or one of them or something, and that got me interested, so I decided to get this. And then this one right here is Norse Gods by Neil Gaiman. And then I have the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lanny, Lanny, Lanny Taylor. I've only read the first one, I haven't read the other two. I've got the Mara Dyer trilogy by Michelle Hopkin. 
Uh, I've read some of this first one, but I haven't finished it. Ow, hit my head. And then we've got, oh yeah. Lockwood and Co. by Jonathan Stroud. I've got the first two books, The Screaming Staircase and The Whispering Skull. Even though there's like five books in the series, I do want to finish this at one point, but I want to wait until the series is over so I can marathon it. But I do really like this. Uh, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it, but it's like teenage London ghost hunters. How is that not cool? I've got Holes by Lewis Sakar um, because I... I don't know, I ran, I randomly one time, like, within this year or last year, I watched the movie again, and I got inspired to read the book, because I never read the book as a kid, so I wanted to do that. I've got Ender's Game by Orson Scott. Uh, I have seen most of the movie, I've read the first couple chapters of, the, of this book. And then I've got Crave by Tracy Wolf. I will admit this was an impulse buy at Target. Um, just in the case I'm ever, just in case I'm ever in the mood for a story like this. I see that the second, they already had the second book out and I was tempted to buy that even though I haven't finished the first one yet, but I didn't. I've got Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. I do like this cover. I think this, yeah, this is another one I got because of Paperback Dreams. I would describe this as a more edgy version of Fangirl. I've got the Shiver series by Maggie Stiefvater. I have read those. I do like them. Uh, I've got uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, Laura Jean series by Jenny Han. Han, Han, I'm sorry. I don't know how to English. Um, haven't read these yet. I've got The City of Ember by Jean Du Prow. Du Pro. Right, uh, we read this in elementary school and I've always really liked it. All right, bottom shelf again. Uh, this first one is by Maria Konnikova and it's Mastermind How to Think Like Sherlock Holmes. This is more of just like a book on teaching you how to think like Sherlock Holmes. It's not really a fiction story. I've got Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I've got The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. And then down here we've got, oh yeah. I've got Words on Bathroom Walls by Julia Walton because I saw the trailer for it and it looked very interesting. It's about a teenager who has schizophrenia. So I guess, he, yeah, he would have like early onset schizophrenia. Um, and that just sounded really interesting to me because I was a psych minor. I've got The Last of August by Brittany Calvario. This is the second book in the series, but I have the first one in my room, uh, which we will go to whenever I'm done here. But this is like a modern teenage Sherlock Holmes story. I've got Every Day and Another Day by David Levithan. Haven't read those yet. I've got The Hush Hush. It's too dark. I'm sorry it's dark, but I just don't have good lighting. The Hush Hush series by... Who wrote this? Be Becca Fitzpatrick. And then I also have The Fallen series by Lauren Kate. These are other ones... These are other ones that, like The Cruel Beauty and East... They're very similar, but if you want more of a witty, sarcastic, kind of hot and heavy one, I would recommend Hush Hush. If you want more of a poetical, poetical, is that a word? Poetic, uh, softer, more of like Southern Gothic kind of vibes, go for The Fallen. I also have the, oh, that's not the book I wanted. The Halo series by... Alexandria Adormeto. Uh, I haven't read these yet. I do like the covers though. I'm a fan of just nice simple covers. And then 
I've got Peter Pan by oh, uh, J.M. Barry. I've got Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I've got The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I do think that I've read the first like few pages of this and I think based on the first few pages it's very interesting because it's told from the perspective of death. I've got Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. And the yeah, the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian by Sherman Alexi. Haven't read any of those. I am a good reader. Okay, moving on to the TBR shelf here. Uh, first up, we have The Raven Cycle by Maggie C. Fodder. Another audiobook that I would highly, highly recommend. Will Patton, great job. Um, and then Call Down the Hawk. I haven't read that, but I have read the first original series. We've got Shadow and Bone, and then the Six of Crows by Lee Bargadugo. I've read the first one in Shadow of Bone. Haven't read these two, but I have read Six of Crows. Uh, and then I've got King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I've got Carry On and Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. I have read this one. Have not read Wayward Son. I probably will hold off because I think it'll. this is going to end up being a trilogy. So I'm going to wait. Got The Maze Runner by James Dashner. I read these. I don't know, middle school, maybe, either that or early high school, and then I watched the movies. I think I actually liked the movies more. I could make a video about why, because I do have opinions. And then I've got Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I really do like that book. Wilder Girls by Rory Power. Haven't read that. Uh, Cursed by Frank Miller and Thomas Wheeler. Haven't read it or watched the show, but this is another Merlin retelling. And then The Warrior Heir by whoop, Cinda Williams Chima. Haven't read that. And then Deposing Nathan by Zach Sh Smedley. Uh, I've got The Shining by Stephen King. Crimson Bound by Rosamond Hodge. This is written by the same... A uh, woman who wrote Cruel Beauty, but this is Little Red Riding Hood. I've got... I've got Scythe by Neil Schusterman. Haven't read that, but it does sound very interesting. Uh, Renegades by Marissa Meyer, the same one who wrote the Lunar Chronicles. Haven't read that, but it does seem very interesting. This does give me kind of miraculous ladybug vibes. Uh, the Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This poor book has been through the ringer because my dog got a hold of it and then it got wet. So I am sorry. Um, got the Splintered series by A.G. Howard. This is kind of like an Alice in Wonderland retelling. Got Ember and Ashes by Sabah Tahir. The Whisper Man by Alex North. And the Fifth Wave series by Rick Yancey. So, those are all those books, and then if we go into my room, I have a small collection in here of, I guess, what could be considered dark academia books. So, right here, I've got Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, Bunny by Amona. Amona Awad. Uh, a Little Life by Hanya Yana Kahara. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. A Study in Charlotte. This is the first book in that series I was talking about by Brittany Cavallaro. Oh, Sleepwalking by Meg Wolitzer. A Separate Piece by John Knowles. And Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So those are all my books. My throat hurts. And uh, that's going to be the end for this video because I've officially now shown y'all every book 
that I own. I guess not talking about audiobooks, but that, that's different. So, yep. As always, if you have ideas or suggestions for any other videos, please let me know. And with that, I'm going to sign off here. So, bye.